Hello everyone, in our previous videos we have already learned how to assess and palpate the sternoclavicular joint. Now based on the examination findings of joint play assessment, the therapist can design and treat the sternoclavicular joint by correcting the affected joint play movement. And in this video we are going to learn the practical skills on how to deliver the superior to inferior mobilization and thirst technique to the sternoclavicular joint. Dysfunction of the sternoclavicular joint can often give rise to pain, stiffness and reduction in the range of motion. The technique that will be demonstrated in this video will help the therapist to gain the range of elevation and abduction in the shoulder joint as well as reduce the pain that often arises at the site of the junction between the medial end of the clavicle and the sternal bone. So one of the way in which the therapist can deliver the superior to inferior sternoclavicular joint mobilization and thirst is to make the patient lie down in the supine line position. The therapist is going to stand at the head end of the treatment table favoring the side that needs to be treated. So for demonstration purpose let's just assume that the patient's right sided sternoclavicular joint play from superior to inferior side is affected. So now the therapist is first going to take the affected side arm into the position of abduction and extension. And from here the therapist is going to grab the patient's right arm with the right hand just proximal to the wrist joint. Now the contact point for mobilization or thirst is going to be either the pisiform or the heel of the hand and utilizing the left hand the therapist is going to place the contact point whichever is comfortable for the therapist over the medial superior end of the clavicle bone. Now while maintaining this contact with the right and the left hand the therapist assumes the stance position and then just leans the body weight in the backward direction. Now what this actually does is it not only tractions the patient's right arm upward but also there is a counter force that is being applied with the therapist's left hand in the downward direction. Now if the therapist keeps on repeating this movement this actually becomes the sternoclavicular joint mobilization for the superior to inferior glide or to deliver the manipulation or thirst the therapist is going to maintain the end position of pretension from where the therapist actually feels that no further movement in the downward direction is taking place and then gives a high velocity low amplitude thirst to the clavicle bone utilizing the left hand. Now what is needed to be emphasized at this point is that there is no need for a therapist to just learn and apply a particular technique. What is more important is to learn the concept that is underlying based on which the technique has been developed. Now for example, the therapist has this palpatory knowledge and the biomechanical knowledge of how the sternoclavicular joint behaves with shoulder movement. The therapist can design a technique of his own also. Like for example, in movement with mobilization technique, we have learned the mulligan concepts of mobilizing the sternoclavicular joint. So the therapist can design different positions for the patient and the therapist position as well as the contacts for delivering such glides. Like for example, I can again maintain the same contact point and now this time rather than moving the arm passively, I'm going to ask the patient, okay, now take your hand up and try to bring it towards the other side ear and I'm going to mobilize. So this is the movement with mobilization technique. So similarly, lot many variations exist and are needed to be explored by the physiotherapist. Another important point that is needed to be emphasized here is that while delivering the thirst or the manipulation for the superior to inferior glide, the therapist can always ask the patient to take a deep breath after achieving the preload tension and exhale and as the patient exhales during the end of exhalation give a thirst to the sternoclavicular joint. So this was all about the practical demonstration on how to deliver the sternoclavicular joint mobilization and manipulation to correct the impaired joint play in the superior to inferior direction of the clavicle over the sternum. I sincerely hope that the information that are going to be shared in this and the subsequent videos is going to be beneficial both for physiotherapy students as well as young practitioners. Do keep motivating us with your comments and feedback. See you all in our next video. Till then, keep, keep sharing and stay connected.